Welcome to the Late Scraft Project YouTube series. This video will look at Lesson 5, Poetic Metaphor. Metaphors are the act of comparing two unrelated things. There are many examples in literature of authors comparing the appearance of the environment to something else. A little like spotting shapes in clouds. See if you agree with some of the poetic suggestions that have been made by authors on some notable landscape features. You might like to sketch out the general shape of the landscape that you can see, or the comparison object, just to assess how the two might be thought of as lining up. Consider if you can spot any pattern to the objects the landscape is being compared to. Water. All's water is shaped like the letter Z, made by a bad penman. When we saw it from Helvellyn, the top arm was not visible, which occasioned its looking like a pair of breeches. This is a fun example, with two distinctly referenced objects. Looking at the lake from various vantage points, the natural bends do lend itself to the form of comparison, the letter Z, but as for looking like a pair of trousers. Here we are at a top Helvellyn, and, well, perhaps the reflection is needed to really see that aspect. Place Fell pushes its craggy foot into the lake like a lion's claw. Why evoke a lion specifically? Perhaps to lend a touch of the grand, the exotic, the regal to those who can only imagine the jutting promontory. Eagle Crag, a mass of rock resembling a stranded ship. Looking up at the peak from here, we can almost see the likes of a hole, rudder and whatnot lying on its side. Mm. No, I can't really see it. Perhaps you can? Ennerdale, said by many to be shaped like a clumsy battle door. Think badminton racket. But it is, in reality, exactly fiddle-shaped instead. Now a fiddle is a nice distinct shape we can work with. Let's see if we can identify it from a vantage point around here. From the top of this hill, I think the metaphor can just about be justified. Wasdale. Like a pointed decanter in shape or an outspread fan or a long-waisted old maid with a fine prim apron, or, no, other things that would only fill up this paper. Now this is a not-so-useful quote, but let us focus on the idea of an outspread fan. And I can't really see any of those things mentioned in this narrow lake from any vantage point. Perhaps you can? I think you'll agree, there's some really forced suggestions on display here, even with squinting really hard. But what majestic images they might conjure in one's mind, except maybe for all's water's resemblance to a pair of pants. Although they all form creative conjurations, there is no common factor, just authors attempting to describe the general shape of the landscape they see in a manner that befits their poetic sensibilities, or at least an attempt at doing so.